And we are back. Um, during the break, I noticed that I totally misspelled crate. Um, so if you didn't notice it when we were writing it, then go to your enum object type and change it to crate. Um, it doesn't change anything for the gameplay, of course, uh, or the actual game, but it's always nice to have everything spelled correctly. Um, the next steps are going to be, I wouldn't say complicated, but a little long and we are going to do some things that might seem a little hard to understand at first. So instead of just writing all the code out and showing you that the save game works and the load game works, um, I'm going to explain you everything step by step and show you how every, each step affects the game and it affects the save and load functions. Um, because I don't feel like just writing out a long save function and then show you, hey, see, this one works. Um, if I do that, well, then you might as well just download the script, copy paste it and, and that's it. Um, so I would like to teach you how it works so that you can use it in your own game and you understand it better. Because if you understand this better, well then of course you'll be able to expand it to your own games and save some extra things in your own games instead of just being able to save this little part I'm doing. So this, what we're doing is just the base of a save game so you can expand it in your own games of course. Okay, so the first thing we'll have to do is to go to the save game manager because there's one thing here I would like to explain you. Um, if you look here on line 9 in my script, we have this list called saveable objects. And we will need to make sure that every single saveable object we create is added to this uh, specific list. And why do we need to do that? Well, it makes it way easier for us later when we need to save the objects. Well, then we can just run through this saveable objects list and call the save function on each object. Um, so the save function in the save game manager will basically loop through this list and make sure to save every single object. So some of you might think, well, why don't we just find all objects of type in our game world and call it there? Because then we don't need to use this list ourselves. Well, you could do that, but it's going to be way more expensive than just creating your own list. Because let's say we have a game with 100 objects in it. Well, then you need to look through every single object in the game and check, well, is this object a savable object? Is this object a savable object? And when you finally find, find a savable object, you'll need to call save on that one and move on to the next one, for example. So it is way cheaper. Let's say we have 100 objects and only 10 of them are savable. Well, then we only loop and look at those 10 objects and save them instead of looking at 100 objects and then passing by 90 of them uh, and not using them. So that's why it's cheaper. But we need to tell our savable objects to add themselves to this list. So if we go to our specific object, or not specific, savable, and the reason we do it in the savable object instead of the specific is because our specific if of type savable. So it's also going to be added to the specific object, this functionality here. Okay. If you haven't done it already, you will have to go to your specific object and remove the start function here. Um, the reason that I'm removing the start function is that if I have the start function inside the specific object and I want to add some stuff to the start function in my savable object, well, then the specific object start function is going to override the savable objects function so that the savable objects function will not be called because there's a start down here. So we have to remove the start to make sure that our savable objects function can be called. Okay. So now we need to add our object to the list. So we need to tell, well, when we spawn a savable object, we need to tell this object, hey, you're a savable object. You need to add yourself to the save game manager list. And we can do that by saying save game manager dot instance dot um, savable objects dot add. So as I stated, a list is a collection of objects um, or variables. Um, and to add something to that list, you simply have to call the add function. So you take the savable objects dot add and then you give it whatever you need to add to it. Let's say this. So we add this 
savable object it adds itself to this list here so every time we spawn a new object it's going to say hey i'm a spawnable a savable object save game manager that instance of savable objects can you please add me to your list and then it does so so the more objects we have in our game that are savable uh, the more objects will be added to this list the next thing we'll have to do is to make sure that our savable objects list is instantiated so we need to go to save game manager and inside the awake function here we'll have to say savable objects equals new list savable objects so the reason that we need to instantiate it is that uh, if we don't do this well then savable objects will never be created and we will get a null reference exception when we try to add something to it we need to ask for a place in the memory to create this list here and we are doing this in awake instead of start because inside our uh, savable object here we are trying to add something inside start and start is called after awake and awake is called before start um, so to make sure that this list is instantiated before we try to add something to it we are instantiating it inside awake instead of start if we call it in start well then we might uh, try to add something to it before we actually create it because we we can't decide which start function is called first so now that we've done this we can actually test if this works so we can go to our uh, s start here make a breakpoint and then i can go up here and press attach to unity you don't need to do this this is just me demonstrating so now the code will pause or break here when it reaches this line of code so if i go to my game and i add a sprite let's take the crate and we make this crate a little larger so we have it so they can just be any sprite you can add any object any sprite to your game and we'll have to click create and create empty and then rename this one to um, save game manager so this is our save game manager script and then add component and write save game so we add the save game manager script to our uh, save game manager empty object okay so the next thing we'll have to do is to make sure that our crate is a savable object but we don't need to add a savable object script to it like this because the savable object script is the super class or the parent class to all the objects that can be saved so it only has all the base functionality and all the specific functionality is in the specific object which could be a we could rename that um, script to a create script or a mushroom script or something if we wanted to do that uh, so we we don't want to be able to add the savable, ob savable objects to the to the um, savable object script to the crate so just right click on remove it so we'll have to go back to our code here just break stuff for a while we need to do something inside the savable object here we'll have to make it abstract public abstract class so in the top here where we define the savable object we'll have to make the keyword use the keyword abstract and abstracts make sure that this um, class here is not uh, instantiatable which will say that we can't say if it was a normal program we couldn't instantiate it by using the new keyword or in this case we can't add the script to any uh, game object because we only want to be able to add the specific object to a game object in um, a, the specific object script to a game object in our game um, so now if I would try to go to the script here and take my uh, savable object and add it then it will come up with this message that the script class can't be abstract so that's exactly what we want to do because we want to be able to take our specific object and add it like this so if you have a hard time understanding this if we take another analogy like let's say we have a zoo game with some different animals in it and we have a super class instead of our specific uh, the savable object we have a, a class called animal and in the zoo we have a, a giraffe and we have a lion and a, the giraffe and the lion should be able to be added to the scripts in the, uh, the game objects in the game but the animal script alone shouldn't be able to be created as a standalone thing so we make it abstract because we don't know what color an animal has we don't know what how many legs one animal has we don't know what it eats and so on because animal is a general term and the same goes for the savable object here so savable object is a general term term 
and our specific object is a specific term term like yeah our crate or something so if we go back to the script set the breakpoint attach to unity uh, and now I will have to pick the correct one here let's see if that's the correct one and then if I run the game see if it breaks and it does then you'll see it, it ran this code saveable objects that add and if I check here there's one crate inside the saveable objects list so we successfully added a saveable object to the saveable objects list so we can actually just do this let's say we have some more objects let's say we also add a mushroom which we also scale up like this like so and uh, if I could find my mouse here and we also add this the stones here and scale them up as well so all the objects with the scripts on them will be saved so we can just take the stone and the mushroom add component and specific object and rename this to mushroom okay so if we play the game again I can't remember if I stopped it I did um, and then we attach one more time and put the breakpoint and oh, we need to play after of course let's try to play one more time and then we check the saveable object and give me a second I think I forgot to let's see here have specific object here and specific object here so they should be added let's see yeah, okay of course you don't call once I confuse myself let's try one more time sorry about that so if we run the game one more time so it will call the uh, awake function on each topic so this is the first time so now we have one the count is one so we just call add the stone to the list we click continue the count is now two so now we added the mushroom to the list and we click continue and now the count is three and we added the crate to the list so now we have all three objects in the saveable object so we can see that this works Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to end this video here and in the next video we will have a look at how we can actually use the player preps for saving some information about our saveable objects. If you haven't done it already then please subscribe to my channel, like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter. Remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page so all your support is very important to me. So if you like my videos then please consider supporting me by going to the Patreon page to support me for an amount every month or by acquiring one of my projects by following the link on the screen right here. If you support me on Patreon, then remember that you will get some different perks like all my projects or you can get private tutoring um, for like programming. Thanks for watching.